Where's the dog, Ron? Right here. Oh, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Hi, it's me, Rabbi Brian, says so on my screen. Hey. And I'm here with a bunch of friends. This is Saturday, August the 6th. And if you don't like the Zoom screen, close your eyes for a moment. Here's people gathering in for the service. Oh, no. There we are. Everyone, do a wave. Say hi to people. Say hi uh, to the people hi. above you, the people good below morning. you. Say, morning. And uh, say good morning to the people who are on Facebook and on YouTube. Good morning, all of those morning. people. Good, good morning. Morning. So, morning. Morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Buenos dias. Okay. 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 Hold on a second. Let me get back to my regular view. There we are. We are back on regular view. Good morning to everyone. Glad you guys are all here. Um, this is a gathering of people who are seeking some kind of transcendent something, but maybe in a little bit of a different way of doing so. I did just see a study, and um, it was followed up on NPR, uh, that Zoom, they found, works really well if people interact. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. And they said, you think? they said just simple things like doing a thumbs up if you agree with someone while they're speaking and doing this, they taught this sign of putting your hands over your heart to show empathy and care, that if you actually interact live with the people in your Zoom group, you can have a pleasurable experience. Oh. Um, it's like, of, of course, you interact. That's what we do. So thank you guys for all being here for interacting. Um, you are I'm all adults helps too. Yes, yes. Um, that that was not part of the study, but thank you, Emily. Uh, you are all adults, and I wrote down notes. My golly gee, I have no idea what that means anymore. <laughs> Well, I'm going to go to the second bullet point because that first one means oh, absolutely uh, nothing. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> the second bullet point says you are all adults and being that you're all adults. Oh, that's what the first one is. Um, I used to say this, that um, I'm glad <laughs> that this is a group of adults because that means that we can feel free in our language that if we want to say some heretical thoughts about the divine that we can just say that and if you find a curse word slipping out of your mouth that that's fine and that's one of the advantages of being a group of adults of not having to cater um, to children and treating everyone like adults that being said it was pointed out to me that last week i apologized i apologized more than i needed to to a group of adults and people pointed out to me afterwards said, we're adults. We can handle it when you mess up. And I thought, okay, well, that's fantastic. And it brought me to this thought. Please hold. I can get it here. Well, that thought will be coming. <laughs> no, it's not. All right, this is this is this is going really well so far. So um, you think so? But that's that that was what the note is that I can't seem to pull up on the screen, which is I have this feeling, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. There it is. Come on, Brian. I have this feeling, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that. You're only as good as... Here it is. Come on, screen. <laughs> that you're only as good as your last at bat. You know that feeling? Where you're only as good as your last at bat. You're only as good as the last time that you performed. And I came, came to that quote. Here it is. I'll put that on my screen here. While the exact okay. amount more is not quantified, you are more than your last performance. <laughs> While the exact amount is not quant quantified, you are more than your last performance. Get something from Yogi Berra. 
Help me out understand that one. Well, if you want something that deals with the last bat, then Yogi was your guy. Okay, for for it we're lots strict, of great quotes. We're on a baseball analogy, and we take a moment to think of Vince Scully, uh, who a lot of people are mourning yes. the death of. Um, so that <laughs> that all being said, I need to remember, and I'm sure it's for all of you as well. I keep thinking I need to produce, I need to produce, I need to produce, I need to produce, and I need to keep things at this certain level of production, or I'm not going to be valued. Wrong. Right. I mean, you are, you are valued, valued by who? You know the feeling. Yeah. No, it's not true. So let's, <laughs> let's, let's go with that. First, do well, we all... The, you're the product. Uh, you're the product. Okay. Go ahead, Jack. And then after that, it's how you are at the time that you are. Right. And good, good my, bad, or indifferent. In my... The firmware that's installed up here says that you need to continue to produce and don't slack off and do better than the last thing you did always. <clears throat> and I, I have a feeling that I'm not the only one who has that feeling. You're I not. see a few people are yeah. waving. I see some yeah. heads nodding. Yeah, we. while the exact amount more is not quantified, you are more than your last performance. So that being said, um, I don't need to do this service better than I did last week's service. Uh, we're just gonna take this week as it is. <clears throat> Last week, some really interesting things happened. But before I go to that, let me just take a moment and look at all your all faces and say good morning and welcome. I'm glad mm -hmm. you're here. Jocelyn, your hand is uh, is raised. Is that an intentional? No. I was actually going to comment on your last comment. But, you know, and honestly, we, we can move on. It's all right. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you. Um, Here we are. So here, here we are. I wanted to talk about something that happened at the end of last week. And if you weren't here last week, um, I hope to fill you in a little bit so that you understand what happened. It was um, weeks and weeks ago, there was a note in the chat. Rabbi, I'm saying Kaddish, and I'll explain what that is. I'm saying Kaddish for my parents. Would you please end our service with the words of Kaddish. And that came in maybe a month ago. And somebody pointed out, I don't read the chat while I'm running, while I'm hosting here. I can't do that that many things at a time. And it was pointed out that somebody had asked me to say the words of Kaddish. And the words of Kaddish are words that are associated with the deceased, with the dead. And it's something that uh, is, it's a very rhythmic Aramaic, uh, phrasing and it's it's not really it doesn't even mention the dead the the words but it's associated with the dead and somebody asked me to do it and I I took a moment a, a month ago or whenever it was and I thought you know what I don't it's not my practice to do but if someone's asking me to do it what kind of rabbi am I if I'm not going to honor that request mm -hmm. and then last week the individual who had asked a month or so ago, put again in the chat, I'm trying to say Kaddish for my parents. Um, would you please end the service? And I didn't see it. And then we got to the end of the service last week and somebody pointed out that there was the comment in the chat. And then it, the comment was made, Rabbi, you said that you would always honor that request, which put me in a very odd place um, as I felt <clears throat> then I had to do this. And so I did. I led the I led those words again, and I was pissed off. Um, really? And, and let me explain why. I was pissed off because, and you don't know this. Why would you know this? But I had made a goal of running a service that doesn't use language that the people who come to the service don't understand. I wanted to do religion outside the box. I wanted to do a service where we weren't doing 
there are two different so here's a thought is that um there's hard focus is what we're doing right now we're thinking we're engaged with what's being said and then there's a soft focus which you can do while you're watching a stream or when you're watching a bunch of monks chant in a language you don't understand you get a soft focus because you don't understand exactly what's going on and i wanted a service um where the soft focus was not brought to us by doing things in a foreign language I don't want to do things in, a, in, in Hebrew. And I even put up in the chat in the clubhouse, how many of you feel okay with me doing things in Hebrew? And there was a majority of people said, we're glad with it. We're fine with it. Please do things in Hebrew. That's, that's, but I don't want to. I had an opposite opposing view. Yeah, I, I did not want to. And I hadn't expressed why. And the reason I didn't want to was, I don't like the words when you translate them. I don't like what they mean. And if I am to say these words and you start, uh, watch how this happens, it's odd, is you start and you get a positive association along with these words because it's comforting. It's that soft focus. You get to hear somebody Yit gadav, yit gadash, shemei rabah, b'yamah devarach. You get to hear this rhythmical. And I didn't... Um, and then you go back later, and I, I never thought about this before. But if you're a little kid and you're saying all these words in a foreign language and you have positive associations with them, and then somebody comes along and shows you what the <laughs> words actually mean, you have dissonance. <laughs> because these are words that have given you comfort. These are words that felt really good to you. And now you find out that you're saying words that say, thank you, God, for bringing the dead back to life. I didn't want to say those words. I don't believe those words. So I got myself stuck. That's a long, long introduction for where I wanted to take us, which is, when I was asked to say those that prayer by this gentleman who doesn't come to the service often, and I emailed with them, they're not here today, and that's not because of what happened. But they came and they asked me to do this thing, and I was pissed. And I spoke with a number of people, and I told them how I was mad. And they said, well, how dare he, how dare he make you do something at your service with which you were uncomfortable? <laughs> And we're going to go a little deeper on that in a second, but it brought me to these two stick figures. Oh, look, I made new ones. <laughs> I'm getting to be a pro. This guy and this guy. This one is D. D stands for discernment. It's what you notice. You notice that it's blue. You might notice that around the D it's white inside. D is just discernment, what you notice. J is judgment, what you think about what you notice. And they always happen in this order. It's always discernment, you notice something, and then you have a thought about it. And here's the quote that I want us to begin with today. It's from Viktor Frankl. He said, between stimulus, between stimulus and response, Perfect example there with the bells. Way to go, Jack. <laughs> Between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. Uh -huh. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. Let me say that again. Between stimulus and response, there is a space. Between what we notice and how we react to it, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. Mark asked me to do a, a thing. I had a response. And my guys were like this, holding hands. And I was pissed. And then I realized he asked me to do this, this prayer in Aramaic. 
I got pissed off. And I realized that I could do this and separate their hands out and realize, you know, well, first, let me let me just be completely open and tell you how petty I can be. And I thought, well, fuck him. He can go to 500 online services that do the services in Hebrew. And why has he got to come and disturb my service? Moreover, he's not been one of the people who comes regularly. How dare he tell me what to do? This is all judgment. This is all judgment. This is all judgment. So it's all happening in my head. And then I had compassion. And the compassion was... This is somebody who wants to do, he's been to the service before. He wants to share with this community. For some reason, he finds this community to be a community he wants to associate with. And he even showed his face on the screen last week. And so then my judgment, my discernment is the same. And my judgment, I allowed in some space for compassion. Not just the judgment of, what a schmuck. But the judgment of having an open heart of that this person too, that they belong. I'm going to stop there and then we're going to go one step further. But I want us to talk for a moment about these two ideas, about discernment and judgment. What are you noticing right now? And what are you thinking about what you're noticing right now? What do you notice right now? And what are you thinking about what you notice right now? I'm wondering they how you are, sleep at night. <laughs> they are mirror images. They, you notice that they're mirror images. The, you're noticing the, the way that they're cut out. That's a discernment. Is there a judgment? And you might have a different one. I'm mm -hmm. sure you have a different one than Rob does. Well, and that's it, blue one's it, white. That's, That's you uh, noticing. Keep going, and let's go not just about the stick figures, but let's talk about time. let's talk about what's going on in your life, what's going on in the service, what's going on. Let's zoom out a little bit. So, <clears throat> Rabbi, what I noticed was I was uncomfortable. Yeah, when you were talking about your discomfort and and your being pissed off, I thought, boy, I don't want the rabbi to be uncomfortable. Right, and. But then it changed, and I was really appreciative that you were willing to talk through that sort of ugly experience that you had that normally we don't talk about some of the thoughts right. run through our minds, and I thought that was pretty damn generous of you. So, Thank, thank you. Thank you. I, I was under the impression that the person who asked for Kaddish was doing it because he had heard about my husband's death. I didn't know it was about his parents. I thought that was very sensitive, but I felt absolutely no need for anyone to say Kaddish for my husband. That's not my practice. So I was very comfortable if you had not done it, but I was thinking that he was doing something sensitive. I, I appreciate that, Carol. And I had thought of it I this did. way, Carol. Had you asked me, my judgment, had you asked me, would I say Kaddish for Michael? Of course, I would have no negative judgment about that at all. Because I think the people here don't understand that Kaddish is said every day for 11 months if you lost someone close in your family. And so this would go on for the 11 months, and that's not the shape of this service. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for your generosity, Carolyn. Thank you for your perspective. And isn't that always such a thing of how two people can see the exact same thing and have heard it differently. Let's go to Jocelyn, then Michael, then Steve. So as a child of a narcissist who has been through a lot of therapy, I have learned that my judgment is off, yeah. is skewed. Yeah, and it yeah, will yeah, be yeah, yeah. the rest of my life. Amen. And so I actually depend on other people's discernment when I start seeing myself flipping out. I turn around to someone else who may be a witness, and what did you see? Yeah, isn't that? Is that okay. I've, I, and Jocelyn, thank you for being vulnerable and opening up and telling us about yourself. And this is for everybody. That what what we're 
not to believe everything we think. I forgot who said that quote, but don't Lord, believe yeah. everything we think. We think we saw this happen this way. Annie was so upset that somebody spilled some of her new face toner. Mm. She had dropped the bag intentionally. Like she dropped the bag. She thought it only had clothes in it. She dropped the bag. It spilled out. She thought one of us maliciously spilled out her face toner. It, it wasn't. Don't believe everything you think. Michael and then Steve and then Al. I find my discernment takes time to show up sometimes. It's not always mm. there when I want it. So I have a situation that I'm working on now, and it's a month later, and I'm starting to see some discernment poke its head around. But uh, yeah, isn't time. that funny? Is that often we think about discernment is what are we immediately noticing? I feel that feeling in my heart. I I I I smell a smell. It's that discernment is instant. And Michael, you're absolutely right. Discernment sometimes can take a year. It can take a long time. Thank you, Al. Go ahead. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, I just, I noticed that you said, what kind of rabbi would I be if I didn't say the, the prayer? Yeah. Um, I just think that, that that says a lot about you. You know, that you, you take what your you take your role as a rabbi seriously, yeah. and yet you're fighting with your role as a rabbi. This made you angry to have to say this. You know, so you're redefining your role as a rabbi. I think that has a lot to do with, with what you were feeling and what was going on with this, like, rapid judgment and then the longer judgment that you had. Yeah, thank, thank you. It, it, it's like, um, th th thank you, Al. I, I'm not going to repeat what you just said. You just said it. <laughs> Steven. You're welcome. Yeah, I, I just uh, took it in as... To a certain extent, this is what we do on Saturdays, and this was a example of a lesson you've been trying to get us to understand, and how much more clearly can we see it when we see it through the eyes of you actually fighting a real dilemma? Yeah, yeah, and and I was in I was very eyes. It was a beautiful thank. It was thank a beautiful you. sharing and a beautiful object lesson. Thank, thank you, Stephen. That was um, yeah. and I, I will thank Kip and others who helped me to formulate how to take the thing that really pissed me off and turn it into a teaching moment. So, <laughs> And I grabbed my prayer book and I didn't see anything about the resurrection of the dead in the Kaddish. No, 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 no not in, that's not in Kaddish, but that's in, uh, in um, the Amida. Yeah. Not in yeah. your prayer book and my prayer book, but Jews throughout the world. Have, oh yeah, I understand that, but yeah. it wasn't in Sorry. that particular prayer It's not book. in the Kaddish. No, okay. So if, if oh if, good because I just wanted God, to make how sure. did I miss that? <laughs> okay, <It's... laughs> I thought it was a fantastic. You know, <laughs> this is exactly, and here am I showing you exactly how it plays out in the in real time. I'd like us to go one step deeper. You all ready for that? Before we do that. My my teacher training comes back in, but I got to make sure that we understand this one. Oh, Mimi. There are the things that we notice, and then there are thoughts we have about them. They are not one and the same. And the more we can separate them out, the more peace we can find. And I, I, I'm going to coin a word, and the word I'm going to make up <clears throat> is the word pre-action. It's like the word reaction you react to something but it's a pre-action it's something that you didn't oh there it is that it's a pre-action it's something that you didn't even intend to do but it's just the way you're wired and you pre-act you act in a way that you are almost programmed to do that it's not our our thinking go ahead alex but the other thing that comes to mind from this discussion about the cottage is this also sort of ties in with your lesson about how if you like somebody, uh -huh. they can pull a plate, paint, uh, a plate of spaghetti on your lap versus if you don't like them, you, you know, the tiniest thing will annoy you because, yeah. you know, I can't help but notice that yeah. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. Carol had asked for cottage, no problem, but for someone who isn't a regular here to ask for Kaddish, it pissed you off. 
Right. And, and I, that's exactly I find that interesting. I want I want that that's going to springboard me exactly where I want to go next. But I'm going to stop at Betsy's house before we get there. Betsy. <laughs> OK, I was just going to say your reaction sounds to me like knee jerk. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about is that we have knee jerk reactions. And what would it be like? What would it be like for us to separate these people from being hand in hand? That our judgment doesn't necessarily follow the discernment, that we can have a little bit of space between them. And let me get to where Alex was, and I'm going to take the story a little bit further. So this is before I come to the wiser discernment that I'm going to be teaching this lesson. So let's put ourselves back somewhere around Tuesday or Wednesday of last week. And I get an email from this Cantor, it was from Cantor Mark, and he writes, my parents died in 1993. I've just decided that I want to start doing the traditional 11 months of Kaddish that I missed out on having done. I die, uh, angrily push all the buttons on my phone to call Kip and say, <laughs> Kip, I got to tell you, this motherfucker, it's not even like he needs to say the goddamn fucking Kaddish. He's just <laughs> made this shit up, right? <laughs> Stay with me. Stay with me. <laughs> and as I'm dialing Kip, I realize, stop. You're making it worse. And Kip picks up the phone. And I said, brother, do you have a minute? And he says, certainly I do. I said, I just almost got myself into a loop of taking this person, using what Alex just said, if it had been Carol who asked, I would have been fine. But I have this person and I'm going to bond with you, Kip, over what a fucking asshole he is <laughs> instead of going to compassion. I'm going to throw him onto the fuel fire and light him ablaze no compassion to him. What an asshole he is for putting me in that situation. You hear where I'm saying here? I'm going to try it in a, a few different words. In, in, he's new. And Alex, it's that quote. If you like someone the way they hold their spoon... I'm sorry, let me say the quote again. If you dislike someone the way they hold their spoon will offend you. But if you like them, they could hold a, they could drop a plate of food in your lap and you wouldn't mind. I had decided that I didn't like this person. And so I was willing to throw them away and to bond more with my buddy Kip over what a, there's a great quote, Kip, I, I think you're the one who brought it into the conversation, which is, in order to have a meeting, all you need is a coffee pot and a resentment. <laughs> Excellent. I was going to collude with Kip. I was bringing it to Kip to collude that we can bond over this person not being a part of the club and being offensive. Pure judgment. Until I realized or until the discernment came of what I was doing. I'm sure I'm not the only one who has done this. We're going to uh, open it up for other comments in a moment. Bob, go ahead. Yeah, <clears throat> without, without judgment, I'm just wondering whether this would be an opportunity to practice love uh, of, of those we don't like. It is always a good time to love those we don't like. It is mm. not comfortable. We like being right, and it's easier to say that we are right when we have them to be wrong. Melanie Klein, um, Freud, Jung, Melanie Klein, really rough 
family tree there in psychotherapy. Melanie Klein said that othering, there's this act of othering where we make us an us by making them a them. Mm -hmm. And that that becomes more our go-to in times of stress. In times of stress, we tend to other more. It's not her exact quote, but it's around her ideas. That we, we need to stop othering and making them a them so that we're an us. And this is a problem, folks. This is a problem with a lot of religious groups is that as soon as we make us and us, we make us and us by making them and them, and we don't learn about them so that we can other them and we can have us be an us. I spend a lot of time thinking about this. We're going to go to Joe first and then Jack. Um, I will just own, while you're owning, that I was part of the Let's Bond with Kip Club. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, Look cute. and and I and I had a reason for it, 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 and the reason for it was that I have an expectation that this group of people stay non-denominational. Uh -huh. Period. So part of me was like, well, I don't think I should interrupt the Saturday service every week if I want a Catholic person, uh -huh. and. So then I had to do the space between my observation and my discernment and my own judgment and go, hey, Joe, wait a minute. What if this guy, what if, for whatever reason, what if like he super needs to do this cottage thing and we're the group he chose for whatever reason? Mm -hmm. If we're kind to him and nice to him, who knows? That may, who knows why he showed up? Right. And maybe it's an opportunity for me to have a new friend. I can make you my right. friend. Yes. And, <laughs> and, and I think it, it, in our group, as we are as we are a group, and a lot of you know each other's faces and are familiar with each other, is to notice what happens when somebody who's not part of the group comes and do you have that, <laughs> oh, foreigner, <laughs> bad. <laughs> like, is, is that the instinctual idea uh, al and then jack yeah i just wanted to share something that i'm taking away from your story which is that there i i've, I've known victor frankel's quote for a long time and i love that quote but it made me realize that not only is there space to make a choice but there's always more space to make more choices oh wow like, you know, you may have to make an amends because you made a choice that you weren't happy with and explain it to a bunch of people like you just did to us about saying the prayer. But there's always more space to have a different reaction. Yeah. And that's just incredible freedom. Uh, so I really appreciate your story. It, it's it takes what Viktor Frankl wrote and um, raises it to a, to a higher power in a way. I like to think of myself as Victor Frankl with hand puppets. Yes. <laughs> and the hand puppets have a lot. hand up too, by the way. Okay, let's go with uh, Jack and then go ahead, Jack. Yeah, I'm. if there's anything I've learned from this lifelong experience is that I live in. I, I always felt I lived in the world of half truths and half lies. Yeah. Every moment of my existence, and uh, my discernment is to try not to react. You know, uh, from something that's happening. Correct. Correct. And and to, and, and then to realize that you know they, that's their truth. It's not mine, and vice versa. It's very hard. It's very hard. Very difficult. Do. Very difficult. Because we like to believe that the thoughts that we have are true. Yeah, right. I mean, uh, my partner loves the eternal, eternal word network. And when those guys start talking, I just realize hey, that's he, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Right. And I just get I just get upset inside, and I just get up and leave. It's not worth it. Thank you, Jack. Uh, somebody, I forgot whose other hand was up. Somebody. Afia. Go for it. Hi, y'all. Oh, um, hi, Afia. 
I, you're not on video. Not on I I'm not on video, no, Good. but Thank I can you. see you all. Um, the I appreciate this conversation. And one of the things that I think we talked about too, Rabbi, I was also one of the folks who had questions. Um, but one of the one of the places I was coming from was like the sense of community care. And so it's a little bit of a tangent from your judgment discernment thing that feels important because how my, my question is always as a, you know, I grew up an army brat, so I'm, I'm often the new person in a space. And I know that that's not always the thing that other people in the space have thought about is how do you get new people in the loop? What's the way that information is translated? How do you teach a culture to people? And so the Saturday service, you know, the word community has been used for some time now. And that means that there's a way that the community communicates about itself to people who are new. Mm -hmm. And so there's also a different level of conversation and responsibility to be considered aside from the discernment and judgment part, which is how do we, let, how do we teach people what we do and how do we teach them in a way that lets them know that they can come back if they don't do things the way that we do them. Right. Yeah. So like in this case, Mark had no idea that this was an undenominational service. So like there, there's a, there's a lot of like, uh, this yeah. is part of the outsider insider conversation, but there is a real conversation for us to have about how do we orient people to this space in a compassionate way? Because we could be, we could be passing up on a blessing yes. by not taking the care to inform folks on what this community is about and how we get down. And so I'm just, I'm hearing that come up in, in some of this as well. And I don't know that we've had that conversation before. And, and I will, I will give you all the, the last email I got from Mark. I, I explained to, I typed out the whole thing. I said, this is my, my practice is not to do. Uh, and he said, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not sure I will be showing back up, but I look forward to coming in the, in the future. And we, we made friends at the end, end of it. Um, I, I want to also tell everybody next week. And this is, I mean, how we show up in spaces and what, what things look like. Next week and the week after, Afia is running this service in my stead. I have the opportunity to be away with my family. And I asked Afia if she would uh, caretake the community and lead lead us uh, in the way that, not, not to lead the way I do, but to do something a little bit differently. So next week, uh, please, please come back and play nice. Um, <laughs> I always used to say in my in my classrooms in my high school classrooms I would always say to the students I say how you treat the substitute reflects on how much you like me <laughs> um, okay let's take a, a moment first of all did a anyone look up and find out something new about the land on which they are seated we do some kind of land acknowledgement and I, I like to do it that because we are all in different locations is to hear from different people who are in different um, different places and Harold and Connie I see you changed your screen name to reflect that would you give us a little bit so we know where you are you're still on mute though Harold we're in the south central plains which is Texas and there was any number of tribes. The most prominent prominent ones were Kickapoo, Wichita, and Tuolumne. So they in and out and around, you know, moved pretty dramatically since this is plains territory. So they had to move with the wherever the animals went. Thank you. And so there's a, a lot of tribes have set foot on this property. Right. And th thank you. And if so someone else want to make an acknowledgement of the land where they currently are, and we'll do other ones in the following weeks. Somebody else have a, a story about the land where they are? Well, I'm in Wisconsin. It's still, still, still the people of the river. Okay. Thank, thank you, Bob. Thank you, Emily. We'll take a moment and Oh my goodness, I found, here's my solution to the Kaddish problem. Because <laughs> there's, there's a rule in Judaism that you're only allowed to say this special prayer when there is a quorum of at least 10 people. And so I had, uh, I spoke with a rabbi friend. I'm like, what do I do? Somebody wants to say Kaddish and I don't want to do it. And she said, well, you do do a minute of silence. Anyone who wants to say Kaddish can say Kaddish during that minute of silence for anyone who they want. 
Like, and that's Rabbi Debbie Till in, in uh, Rochester, New York. She saved my ass on coming up with that clever solution. So as is our tradition, we're going to take a minute uh, for prayers. Um, and we have a list of people. Joe, would you share with us? I would be happy to. The list this week is Rita W., Rita S., Amy, Carol Ox, Kip, Joe, Linda D., April, Peggy B., Chris B., Vashti Ross, Abbas, David D., Patty J., Greta Robert, the upcoming election in Sweden, Patty J., RJ, New Baby Ryan, Marcus, Marilyn G., and Brittany G. And we'll add to those anyone else's names or anyone whose heart needs a little extra prayers. Um, let's take a minute of silence starting right now, and we'll go in on my clock above my head until 841, until 842. We're back. Thank you guys very much. Um, one other point that I noticed when I was telling people about, right, I'm trying to sort out how do I do this cottage thing and how do I, what do I do? And da, 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 da. And I spoke with people. Uh, I'm an oral processor. It helps me to speak to people to figure things out. And I got solutions. Well, you should, maybe, maybe we should try doing it always at 45 minutes after the hour, we'll do this. Or maybe we should make a, a, a list of rules and we should put those in the chat. And, uh, and I noticed in people trying to come up with solutions, with me trying to come up with solutions, was there was this compelling pull towards structure. <clears throat> there was a very compelling pull to take this service, which is delightfully not as minimally structured as I could possibly make, but there was a pull towards if there were only more structure, we would have boundaries and we would feel more safe. Mm -hmm. And I, I just want to put that out for you to noodle upon about how structure gives us the illusion of control and therefore safety. But it, and it also gives us something to do. Like, let's build fucking walls. Okay, yeah, all right. Let's have, we have a project now. <laughs> and it gives us a structure, but that the structure might, def, might go against the goal. Right. It might be comforting, but it might also be an, antithetic, antithetical. Mm -hmm fancy word uh to what we're trying to achieve okay i think structure leads to exclusion structure Absolutely. can lead to exclusion there's a great sign i saw in a church once it said i would rather be i i would rather be excluded for who i include than for than be included for who i exclude, exclude. Mm. exactly yeah I would rather be included. I would rather be excluded for who I include than to be included for who I exclude. That's what we're going for here. And right. let's take a moment to okay. um, smell the roses and to appreciate that if right now in this moment, we have a lot of people who have like minds who are all trying to do the same thing. 
we're going to break into small groups, hopefully. Alex, I'm going to host over to you so that you can set up the rooms to do so. Alex, I can't find you. There you are. So the service would be a lot easier if there were only like two people in it. I'd be able to. <laughs> so this is my uh, un unfortunate time of telling you all, most of you have to go. <laughs> um, we're going to go into small groups and I'd love in the small groups for you to have an opportunity to talk about. Well, the prompt is going to be to talk about a time in which you notice something and you judged it to be something, but it weren't necessarily the case. And how many roughly do we want to? Prefer? We're going to do rooms of five and we're going to do six minutes. And if you're on audio only, you're going to get sent into a room automatically. Um, you don't have to participate. This is open again. And what other announcements am I supposed to make before I send you off into rooms? Uh, yeah, please uh, be mindful of each other's time. And it gives you about 45 seconds a minute per person to talk about discernment and judgment and how how these two feel absolutely interlinked in so many of our lives. Alex, we're ready to make that a thing? Yep, rooms are ready to go and they're now open. Alex, it's asking me to join a room. Um, if I do so, I think I'm still broadcasting what I do over into that room. Can I Most leave? Most likely, yes. Okay, I'm going to go join room two because the room I'm assigned to, it only has two people in it otherwise. Um, okay. I'm going to leave you here. That is not being broadcast, just so that you know. Um, okay. I don't think it's being broadcast. Be careful. I don't know. Well, I, I won't cuss then. How's that? I cuss all the fucking time. Yeah, I used to live in Phoenix. We're up to 125. Yeah. Well, uh, we're not used to it here. Uh, Connie, Harold, Jack, just to warn you, uh, because you have my illustrious presence in this room, uh, <laughs> it is being broadcast to Facebook and YouTube. There are a total in the entire globe, there are probably 30 people who won't watch this. <laughs> Good. there are probably more than 30 people who won't watch this as well but i'm curious if if you guys have had this discernment judgment uh, experience and how 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 it goes for you well probably about the same as it did for you say a little bit more connie well um we have a daughter that i cannot communicate to okay with and uh, my discernment is that she dislikes me intensely. Uh -huh. And I, you know, no matter what I do, she can't, she can't feel anything for me. Uh -huh. And so I feel very uh, judgmental in that I'm, I want nothing to do with her. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. That's a, that's a big thing to share. Well, it's a hard, it's a hard thing to live with. I, I can't, I can't, I truly, I, I hate to imagine. Yeah, well, I, I yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've had, we've had our share of, of kid problems, so anyway, but. Um, and so, so, yeah, that's, that's. All. It, it's, it's hard to, to change what has gone on for 60 years, so I don't know. Wow. Wow. Very difficult. Yes, it is. Well, your your question brings back uh, <laughs> so many memories. One, one, probably a prime one is in nineteen fifty five. Actually, on February first, I was in I was in a uh, what, what the, the church calls a novitiate, which is a, a time that you decide whether you're going to stay or leave. And is uh, this morning, towards is this towards ordination? I don't understand. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's it, it's what they. I was a Capuchin Franciscan monk. Okay. Okay, and so that uh, 
that afternoon I walked out on the property, sat on the edge of the property on the you know three three foot wall, watching all the traffic going by. And I had this incredible feeling that I no longer belonged there mm. where I was. So I made that I, I I just looked at both ends of the stick and I said, I discerned that no, it's not going to happen for me. Uh-huh. And I made that judgment. Went back in, talked with the, the the priest that was in charge of all of us, and said I'm leaving. Uh-huh. And I left. I left on the eight o'clock train out of Boston. That was it. The next morning, it was it. That was it. Wow, what a story! Interesting. Thank, thank you, Jack. Thank sure. you for sharing that. It's interesting. We've lived a lot of places and. Bible Belt is an interesting place, and Texas is even more interesting because you run into people all over the place that have never left the state, and you start having a conversation with some of these people, and they have no clue what goes on in the real world because they've never crossed the state boundaries, and they start rendering judgments. Yeah, yeah. This and that, and this and that, and this and that, and it's all you can do to bite your tongue and not say you're dumber than a post. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I had a conversation, uh, I don't remember, a little while back with somebody and, and they were start railing against Islam and Muslims. And, mm. and my comment back is, you ever had a com- conversation with an imam? <laughs> you know what you're talking about. Well, I don't even know if they knew what an imam was, but anyhow, it's not the point. The point is... They were running their mouth about something they absolutely knew nothing about. And yeah. You talk about biting your tongue. And th- this place is notorious yeah. for fundamental Christianity and yeah. <clears throat> oneness. We're the one. Don't cross the boundaries of Texas. And the only reason I'm in Texas is because I chased my paycheck down here. Yeah. Th- thank you for sharing that. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Connie. Thank you, Harold. Thank you, Jack. I want to push us back into the main the main session. Um, always, always good to learn about people. Thank you. I'll be like, what's wrong with you? I loved coming home from the natatorium in the middle of winter and my, my hair was icicles and I would sit there and I'd just oh. crunch them and it was so cool and fun. I know, my mom, it would drive mom crazy. Don't do that, you're gonna break your hair. Yeah. <sighs> It's fun. It's satisfying. Leave me alone. Oh, I got a mail, guys. I will see you later. Bye, Jocelyn. Bye. Bye. Yes. Well, here comes everyone zooming back in. <coughs> Thank you all for coming back in. Um, I I'd love to hear. Is there something that was brought up in your group that was particularly moved your heart, or something that there was a moral that you can say? Here's something that I learned that I'm going to take with me that I think other people might want to learn from too. Well, we all discussed uh, um, when we're driving, we're at our worst. When you're when you're driving, you're at your worst for how? Explain. Well, that. we uh, we we make snap judgments yeah. um, about the other drivers, yeah. uh, and um, and making that space to, to make room for, well, you know, well, my example was I thought some guy was an idiot because he had pl- blocked the whole road I needed to turn on with his car. And I had to, you know, squirm around him. And an hour later, he was still there. And so I rolled my window down and asked if he needed help, you know, do and, you know, can you move your car? And he says, I can't move my car. Uh, the steering column is broken. I was like, oh, okay, so you're not an idiot, and I'm I'm kind of a jerk for right. you, assuming you were. Yeah. <laughs> so. thank, thank you, thank you. Yeah. yeah, isn't isn't amazing how many judgments we make just based on the color of somebody's car and the size of the wheels and <laughs> BMW. We've decided something about their girth based on how how high up the truck bed is. <laughs> I was subtle there. That was subtle. That was. I was no subtle. It's not your um, Anything? And, and <laughs> let's let's hear from some someone else. Something else that you got from your group from sharing your group. 
Okay. For us. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Ray. It, for us, it was uh, putting a space, however that is for you, in between your observation and your judgment. Uh, and particularly for me, it's learning to count to 10 or do whatever it is I need. Because once words are said, <clears throat> they can't be taken back. Correct. You can say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. But that's, for me, my normal response is, then why in the hell did you say it in the first place right. then? You said mm. what you meant. Yeah. It's having the space. And, and, and even before adding the space is realizing that's a judgment. That that's that's not what we necessarily saw. That's not what we necessarily heard, or that we. But we're making up that story. That's a hard thing to do. Thank you, Ray. Um, I have a few announcements to make. If anyone else have what we want to share on that last thought. Okay, a few a few announcements. Um, one. This is a um. If you want, hey, after this service, in, in a few minutes, we're going to go into break into um, there's a donut hour. There's a deep dive time. There's a poetry room. Those are not set in stone. If you would like to have a at this next hour group to say prayers in Swahili, <laughs> I don't like offer it up. Ask Alex to create a room, make a room. Let's make something happen in the same <clears throat> The same is true on the clubhouse. If there's something in the clubhouse you want to see happening, let's make that happen. That being said, um, I'm talking with uh, Christine, Christina about adding in the, the God Shekhinah group. And we're trying to organize something in the clubhouse so that there can be more, uh, more overlap between the two. Uh, other announcements. Here's an announcement that I made last time. Oh, also in the clubhouse. Um, hey, do you want to be in a Hebrew club? I yes. know you do. <laughs> um, go what's in. The, there's what's a, a Hebrew club. It's it's a club of people who are thinking. Hey, Hebrew looks like that's kind of fun. Let's talk about it. Um, so in the in the clubhouse, if you go in special rooms, there's a room called Jew Friends of Mine, because uh, I thought that was a funny title. And in there, there's a little Hebrew. Let's talk about Hebrew. I've learned the alphabet or I want to learn the alphabet or anything you want to be involved in. Um, please to go there. And the last on the announcement is this. Uh, hey, should you find yourself depressed? That happens. That's OK. It's OK to not be OK. I think that's a really important announcement to make. Amen. Amen. Um, I do want to say one just uh, one thing directly to Kip. Hi, Kip. <laughs> hey, buddy. Remember you told me to slow it down. You did great. <laughs> you did so good. I am so proud of you. This was awesome. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. I appreciate, it. and I wanted to to thank Kip, but to thank all of you for the feedback that I get. Um, that's how this works. And to be open to feedback from others is such an important skill in such a way that we all learn. I'm going to end our service there. Thank you all for coming. I have already hostified you. I'm going to turn off. Hey, people on Facebook and YouTube, we're not sure if you're going to be able to join us next week or not due to technology. Um, you'll find out next week. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take it personally. Yeah. Um, Kip, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just want to let people know we're going to have a little bit more formalized discussion and deep dive. We're going to try this a few times. We're going to start out with a topic. Uh, we've talked about doing this for a few weeks. We're going to start with a topic this week that I messed up the first time I typed it in the chat. But the topic we're going to start with is uncertainty is the doorway to a loved filled life. So oh. if anyone wants to come and, come and join that discussion, you're more than welcome.
if you uncertainty mm -hmm. is a path to a love filled life. I'm not certain about that. Are you that. certain about that? That's the joke yeah. I was making, Rob. God, Good job. Okay. Well, um, thank you all for being here. Uh, let's joke. turn to the person above you, below you, to the sides, <laughs> wave. Uh, and Alex, I think I'm going to be in the Rabbi Brian breakout group for a moment. Thank you guys. I'll, I'll see you in a few weeks because I'm going on a trip. Thanks, Rabbi. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Can you Have put me trip, into Rabbi. deep dive as usual, please? Um, are you are you deep diving or are you chit chatting? Because the, the other thing that uh, I was asked to mention is that if you're planning on going to deep dive for socialization and not actually the discussion, we're going to put you in a, in 